All right, that was the end of part one. And ideally, at least, you know, we're half done and we can do this, you know, in whatever amount of time. If, again, if it seems like I'm going too slow for you, this is the only time we're going to do this. I'm going to expect that after this, you'll be able to do it yourselves. All right. And when you take your next test, which right now I think is at least is going to be Friday, which will be on 5, 6, and 7, I'm going to ask you to do this. You know, that you, if you want to follow the same steps, you can. You know, make a repository, clone it, and then at the end, when you get done, push it all back to the server. All right. Now it says go back to your local terminal window and send the committed changes to Bitbucket. Now notice again, we're going to use a git push origin master. Origin is just a name that it's given. All right, and master means that right now we're pushing it back to the source itself. It says this command specifies you're pushing back to the master branch. All right, on origin, which is the Bitbucket server. So please put this command in. You want to put that in again from right here. So put in git space push space origin space master and hit enter. It should be, it should look pretty much like this. It may look a little different and if it does, don't let that concern you. In English, what this is saying is basically everything that we staged and then committed, now we want to send that back to the server. All right. So again, I'm going to right mouse click on that, choose copy, paste that in, hit enter. Now, I get that message again. It's asking me again. As soon as I put that in, if I put it in OK, click and click OK, there it is. All right, so it's basically telling me that it pushed it out to right there, which is where we cloned from originally. It says your commits are now on the remote repository. So they're telling you now to go back to Bitbucket. And now what they're saying is over here, again, if this is not showing over here, you might have a hamburger menu, the three lines, you'll have to click on that. <clears throat> but now if you click on commits, now you'll notice there's something there. Before it was empty. All right. All right, well, we'll have to look at it. So as it says, if you click commits on the sidebar, you'll see a single commit on your repository. Bitbucket combines everything you just did into that one commit and shows it to you. Now, the reason I'm, I'm bringing that up, no, I don't want to show you, I can read to you, but I want you to understand something. What some developers do is literally, if you're going to be making changes throughout the day, you'll make a bunch of changes. You'll commit them. You'll make more changes. You'll commit them. You'll make more changes. Then you'll commit them. Let's say you do that a half dozen times. Then at the end of the day, then you will do your push. So you're only pushing once. Other developers believe, no, I've made changes. I want everyone to see them. So they make their changes. They commit. Then they push. Then they make more changes. Then they commit again. Then they push. How you do it, what you do, etc., that is literally going to depend on whether you're doing it yourself. And if it's just you, you can do it in any order you want or any way you want. If you're doing it with a team, there'll probably be some kind of administrator who will tell you the way that it should be done. All right. So it says you can see the author, and that's got your name in it, etc. The other thing we can do, too, is if you look on here, is if we click Source... All right, 
Then if you go down to the bottom here, okay, now if you click, and yours was empty before, that's what you guys had. If you click locations.txt, it shows you the file that we created. Now again, not Earth's moon, big deal. But the point is, you can go back and take a look at what you just pushed from the local machine to the server. All right. <clears throat> Next on the list, it says right there, we need a file with more details about the location. So we're going to create, now we're going to do it the other way. We're going to create a file on Bitbucket, and then we are going to pull that file onto our local machine. All right, before we do that, I want to see if we can, if, if Chris, if your problem is minor or not. All right, so we've done, we did a clone, we made a change in the local, we did a push, and like I said, now we're going to go the other way. Now, as it says, we're going to pull changes from your Git repository on Bitbucket Cloud. Well, we have nothing right now to pull because the two are identical right now. All right? So as it says, we want to go and we want to create a new file in Bitbucket. Now, okay, it says click source to open this. Notice you only have the one file. When we do this, we are going to make some changes in here. All right. So what they're saying, and this is what I already showed you, was right here. All right. So when we clicked on source originally, it's showing you that that's the only file we have. Nothing spectacular nothing you know earth shattering there so it says click source to open the source directory notice you only have one file we did that these are all the things that are in there okay so notice a so if we look at this all right they show you what all this stuff in here is these different things so as it says a that says master that's your branch selection so if you had different branches there we don't we could we could open up a different branch all right B the source page as it says click the link to open the page that's what I did for you before C new file button you see this where it says new file everybody see that all right that may or may not be showing on yours okay that may or may not be showing 
And I don't remember what I had to do to get it to show, but we'll see if we can figure it out. All right. And D, source file area, as it says. That's where it'll show what files you have. So it says here, from the source page, click new file in the top right corner. This button only appears after you have added at least one file to the repository. All right. And it's probably real simple. That's why I can't figure it out. Wasn't there? Wasn't there? Just the triple dots. Just the triple dots? Yeah. Okay. You're right. There. And choose. So click the triple dots and choose add file. So again, now what we're going to do is we are creating the file from the server side. Then we're going to copy it back down to the client side or to our local machine. All right. This all right. So we've got the new file as it says this button. Yeah, yeah. A page for creating the new file appears as shown in the following. All right, so we've got that. Right now there's no name. Now, if you look up here, they're showing you the different options. A has got the default as it says branch with new file. Change if you want to add a file to a different branch. We don't. B is the new file area. That's where we add our content. All right. So we have to give it a name first. They want you to call this station locations. So that's what you should add right here where it says file name. That should say station locations. Remember, that's not the same name um, as, as our repository, which is called Bitbucket Station Locations. All right. Now, it says select HTML in the syntax mode list. What the heck is that? Well, if we go down under syntax mode, see where it says plain text? That worked fine for the first one because we put in a text file. But we want to click the down arrow by plain text. You might have to arrow up, and you want to find HTML. Right there. Nothing magical happens. So I click the down arrow right there, and I arrowed up with what was left, and I chose HTML. That is just letting the system know this is a hypertext markup language file that we're about to put in here. All right? And they want us then to add this. I'll tell you what, it might be easier for you to read if I just go put it in here. All right. And then make it bigger. All right. So that's what you're supposed to add into the file right there. Two paragraphs. First one that says Bitbucket has the following space stations. And the second one, Earth's moon headquarters where Earth's moon is going to be bolded. Again, I would use strong tags. We don't care. That's not what this exercise is about. And you can tell if you look up in the address bar at the top, it says we're in a create file, okay? And it's got some kind of an ID associated with it at equal master. So it's letting us know we're doing it right in our root or whatever you want to call that in the master area. All right. Hopefully everybody's gotten a chance to put that in. After you do, if you look way in the right-hand corner here, there is a blue button that says commit. Right there. Okay. And it gives you a message. Commit message. Stores locations created online with Bitbucket. That's fine. I'll just create, click commit. All right. And now it shows us in here, I just did a new commit. Okay. Okay. 
It says you are taken to a page with details of the commit. Yeah, we just saw that. If you want to see a list of all commits that have been made, I'm not going to do that. But if you do want to, you can click right here. And that shows you every commit that's been made. Anybody else get that? All right, let's take a quick look. Did you go, you did go under the view when you changed the type to HTML? Uh, yes. All right. Now, as it says, we need to get that new file from the server to our local machine. As it says, the process is pretty straightforward. It's the reverse of the push we used before. Okay? So they say to pull the file to your local repository, do the following. All right? Go back to our local repository right here. All right? And it looks like I'm in the right place. Enter the git pull minus minus all command right there. Git space pull space minus minus all. All right, and after you do that, hit enter. You may or may not be prompted for your password. I know I will be. All right. And you should get something that at least looks similar to what you see in here. It may not be identical. The other thing is the author makes a distinction here, and I'd like you to look at this. It says, in more complex branching workflows, pulling and merging all changes might not be appropriate. This is saying to grab everything. All right, but if, if it may, you, there may be an occasion when you just want to grab a file. All right, not everything that's out there. But see if this works for mine. Copy, paste, enter, again, fetching. I get that error until I put that in. Let me ask, how many of you are getting this where that's asking you to put in your password? Okay. Okay, and there that is. So that's been done. As it says, git pull merges, all right? It says navigate to the repository on your local system. Well, if you look, if you look up on the screen here, two things I'm going to do. First, I'm going to type in ls, and notice I now have two files. All right, it brought down the station's locations file. Okay. I don't know why it doesn't show an HTML extension, but it doesn't. Okay. I did a git status, and it tells me, oh, everything's up to date. But I didn't commit on, this, on the client side, on my local machine. I created a file on the server side and basically sent it over. All right. All right, and the last thing that's in here is they have you do use a git branch to merge a file. And I'll tell you what. For now, at least, I'm not going to run through this. Feel free to read this part, but I'm not going to go any further. I'd like to get John's and Chris's stuff to work. I also told you I didn't want, want this to take too long. What this does, 
All right, just so you know what this part does, and you can go through it if you want to. It will work. All right, if you follow their steps and it's, yours has worked so far, it should work. You basically make a copy of what you're working on. You make a change to the copy, all right, and then you send it out. All right. So, like I said, we've gone through most of this in here. We've gone through what I consider to be the most important part. All right. What you will have to do for Friday when you take your test, and don't do this now because I want to run through this, make sure that, you know, I'll give you a list of the steps. But the last test we did, I believe, was HOT 2, right? That was the last hands-on test we did. All right. In your repos folder, I'm going to have you come in and probably copy in that entire folder. And then I'm going to have you do a push and, and you know, make that active and push that thing out to Bitbucket. All right. Just to make sure that it works. Okay. Then you'll be able to go back onto your own system, do your stuff and push it again. Does that make sense? All right. And... Then we'll have to take a look either tomorrow or Thursday on how you give me access. All right, I've got that stuff, and I'll, and I'll show it to you. All right, so I'd rather just have you go on. Again, if you want to do this, you will not be asked to do any branching in this class at all. But if you do want to go on and finish this, we're about two-thirds or so of the way through, then do that. If you don't want to do that, then don't. I think everybody knows, I've said this before, the chapter five and six homeworks and labs, not the one we did with all those boxes that are different colors and sizes, but the other stuff is all due by today, the end of the day today. Most people have turned it in, some people have not. All right, the other thing that we did, that thing again where, you, you know, I had, there were six things you had to create, and one of them kind of looked like this, and had a header and a footer, had something over here, et cetera. That stuff is due Friday. All right. Now, I'm, I'm also telling you this in advance. When you come in here, not tomorrow, when you come in here on Thursday, this, is, this wall is going to be halfway open. I will not be here for the first hour. I mentioned this at the beginning of the semester. There are going to be three times this semester where they have Wentzville employer breakfasts where they bring in people who are interested in hiring our grad, you people, all right? Mr. Corrigan normally meets with them, but since he's in St. Louis this semester, I have volunteered to be his conduit and be the person who goes over there. And it's not what you think either. It's uh, not like this grand and glorious breakfast, all right? Uh, but uh, it's typically in the other building, and I think it'll be there. And then usually what happens is anyone who's interested we walk them over to this building and give them a tour and let them you know, see what you're doing and let them see what they're doing in there. All right. Usually it takes about an hour. All right. So the, the, my plan right now is what I plan on doing the rest of the period today, because I've already taken up almost two hours of your time, is to give you a lab. Tomorrow when you come in here, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to do a test review for you for the written test for chapter seven, all right? Then Thursday, once I get here, which should be around nine to 9.15, we'll take the written test for chapter seven. And then Friday will be the hands-on test for chapters five, six, and seven. Much of that test will be you tweaking what you've already done. So any material that's in chapter five, or chapter six, or chapter seven, and, and the earlier stuff, but it's fair game. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes? All right. So that's that's what we have in store for us, so to speak. All right. I'll be right there to walk over by both of you.